Hey, welcome back to The Real Mari. Today we're gonna talk about what our journey has looked like in terms of infertility and different steps that we've taken, medications that we've been on, and what the plan is as of right now. So first things first, we're gonna start off with a TMI warning. Um, we are talking about the act of conceiving and there's gonna be a lot of menstruation talk and other stuff. So if that's not your jam, this is your opportunity to sign off. If you're still here, you're my girl or guy, sorry. So this really starts for me when I first started menstruating. I was 12 or 13 years old. Um, at first it was semi-regular. Um, I didn't have anything out of the ordinary, uh, but by the time I was 15 or 16, it was pretty, um, Irregular, I did not have regular periods in terms of the timeline, but I also had irregular bleeding. It was very heavy. Um, once I was, by the time I was 18, it was pretty severe. And that's about when I started hormonal birth control um, to sort of help regulate some of that, as well as, you know, stop me from having babies. Pro tip, figure out whether or not you're even fertile before you put your body through that. Um, so, I was on hormonal, hormonal birth control for several years and my cycle was regulated with that. Um, I tried um, the pill, I did um, NuvaRing, I did, um, and then I had a, a, what's the word? Oh, IUD. I had an IUD. Um, I did Mirena for four years, three years. Um, I should have maybe written this down. You would think this is my third take that I would already know these numbers, but not so much. Anyway, so I had Marina, got Marina taken out shortly after getting married, uh, just because it was my time to either reinsert or because, or, or not, and I chose not to. At that point, I hadn't had a natural cycle in over five years, and I just sort of wanted to see what my body was do by itself. Um, once I had it taken out, I didn't get a period for about six months. Um, so I was diagnosed with amenorrhea, um, most of which the doctor just put on to me being overweight. I varied in um, my weight for years, for most of my life, to be honest with you. And even at the various rates that I was, my period was not ever regular without the help of hormonal birth control. So while I do understand that that is probably in some way connected, frankly, I call BS on just every time they see a plus size woman, that's all you see wrong with her. You don't really go through any other testing, um, especially someone as young as I was. I think I was 23 when I got it taken out. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. The whole thing was BS. When I was about 24, I still had not received a period, um, received, like it's a gift. I still had not had a period um, over several months and went to the doctor with my OBGYN at the time, uh, did a ton of tests, came back with the fact that I um, had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome for anyone who isn't aware of all the acronyms. Um, I did not actually have cysts, but I presented with some of the other, um, not side effects, symptoms. Um, which is amenorrhea or irregular periods. They thought that there might be something else wrong um, with my hormones. We did a lot of testing and that was all I was told was that I had PCOS. And at the time I just took it at face value. I was frankly grateful to have any kind of diagnosis because I'd had problems for years with my period and was always just told, ah, it's just your weight. Um, with metformin, they gave me, or with PCOS, um, I was, told to take metformin, which was going to help um, regulate the hormones. And I was also told that a side effect of this was that uh, people became extra fertile. At the time we hadn't really started trying, but we had stopped preventing, which is basically just a married person way of saying we got lazy. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it was what it was. Um, I was definitely, in my own mind, very ready to be a mom. I feel like I've been ready to be a mom 
I don't know, maybe I was born a mom in my own mind. Um, so that was uh, when I was about 24, I did metformin. Not For most of my life, medications, side effects have not greatly affected me. I've been very lucky to not have to take very many medications. I had my first surgery just last year, so I've been mostly healthy, uh, but metformin side effects kicked my butt. Oh man, I um, was really uncomfortable, was <laughs> really not liking it. Um, and I'm, I just, I don't know. It didn't feel like it was doing anything. It did nothing for my amenorrhea, did nothing for regulating my cycle. Obviously I did not ovulate because I did not conceive. Um, and I just felt like the side effects never got better, which for some people was only bad for maybe like a week or two, not the case for me. Um, so I stopped taking metformin about four-ish months after it was diagnosed to me or prescribed to me. Um, and then we just sort of didn't do anything about it. I didn't go back to the doctor. Around that time I changed jobs and just didn't really deal with the fact that I wasn't getting regular periods. Flash, flash forward to August of 2015, uh, my husband and I, Rai, uh, decided to actually start trying. Um, that was my 26th birthday. I am 28, yep. Whew. Um, that was my 26th birthday. We decided that we would actively start trying. So because I have zero chill, I bought OPKs online. I bought books. I watched a million YouTube videos. I um, bought pregnancy tests because overzealous and over presumptuous are my middle name. Um, I'm trying to think what else. That was probably the bulk of it at that point. Um, I started taking prenatals and it just sort of felt like, okay, this is it. This is the moment I spent my whole life preventing, well, my whole life, my whole sexual life preventing pregnancy. And this was the moment that I was like, gonna get to do it six or so months in no dice. Um, and for a woman of my age, Six months is about the amount of time, the minimum before an OBGYN will be concerned um, if you can't conceive naturally. And there was nothing. I had taken OPKs like it was my job. I uh, basically should have taken out stock in OPKs at that point. And um, OPKs are ovulation predictor kits. I buy the really cheap, um, oh, what are they called? Wonder or something. I'll link them down below um, from Amazon that are just the strips that you dip into urine. Um, I had bought the more expensive uh, clear blue ones, never got the smiley faces that we were looking for, got a few false positives, but it was never a true ovulation. So at that point, I was very concerned because six months of trying had gone by and I never ovulated once. Um, and that was a problem. So we went back to a different gynecologist this time. Um, and talked about some of the stuff that we've been going through and the fact that I hadn't ovulated over six months. I kept track of my um, irregular bleeding and things like that in an app called Ovia. Um, so I will link that down below as well. That's on the Apple Store for free. I think it's really, really helpful because it tracks more than just one thing. It, more than just your cycle, you can track uh, medications, weight, blood pressure, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it just really helps me stay organized and the one thing that i will say you are so out of your control of your own body when it comes to fertility that being able to track things just made me feel like there was something i could control in all of this um, or trying to find a rhyme or reason to any of it so um, we also bought a uh, basal body thermometer yes um basal body to basal body temperature thermometer I don't know I was basically tracking my temperature as well looking for any sign of ovulation never got one we went to a new gynecologist they ran more tests did some ultrasounds found a cyst on my ovary they were concerned so we went back for several ultrasounds found that it was kind of just a fluke um, definitely not what we uh, were afraid of and they were saying that the next step would be Clomid um, and to potentially see a reproductive specialist at this point we've been trying for over a year about a year and a half almost um 
they did warn me <laughs> that Clomid, one of the side effects of Clomid or known issues or whatever, is that you can um, over stimulate an egg so that two appear. Basically, the fear is multiples. So if you're on Clomid, you've probably been told that there is a possibility that you might have multiples. My hey, Ryan and I, neither of our families have twins basically at any point in the history naturally. Um, we live away from our families and the idea of multiples at that point just I think terrified the both of us because we just stopped going. Like We just didn't make any follow up appointments. Just took some time um, and uh, took a break. I mean we were still technically trying but we weren't on any kind of medication. I was just taking prenatals and trying to be healthy, lose a little weight, um, which we did, which I did. Um, and then in about April of this past year, 2017, I finally was ready to make an appointment with a reproductive specialist. Um, and so I called the best, well, the one that we were suggested or recommended and um, asked for the next available appointment, which was September. So you know someone's good when they're booked out that far in advance. I uh, took the next available appointment, spent the summer just trying to get my body as ready as possible. I did acupuncture, which I will do a whole other video on because acupuncture for infertility was super interesting. Definitely a life experience that I will remember forever. So I did acupuncture over the summer just to feel again like I was somehow in control or contributing um, just waiting for September to arrive. We got to our first um, reproductive endocrinologist appointment, appointment, and if there's one thing that I could suggest to anyone else going through this, if you have not seen an RE yet and you spent more than six months trying and you think that there is something wrong, listen to your body, follow your gut, and make the appointment. It is night and day for me in terms of First of all, how we're being taken care of, but how I'm being heard and also, I don't know, it's just the whole thing is is different. The goal is different and um, I just, I love it. I, I have a great specialist. I love our doctor so much and I love our team so much um, and it feels so good to have made a forward moment movement. Um, it feels so good to have made a forward movement and to feel like we're doing something. So we make our first appointment immediately that day. They had us drop, well, before the appointment, they had us drop off like a million different medical history documents. Um, they had, when we arrived at the appointment, they were prepared. They already knew everything there was to know that I could have given on paper about my history. And maybe this is just how everyone is and I've just had not great doctors, but there is something amazing about walking in to an appointment with someone and not having to go through your own spiel of like, history of my body um that is just it was just so i don't know comforting and uh, also gave me a lot of confidence and in, in that we were in the right place um we did an, an ultrasound straight away that day because of the amenorrhea and my period not ever coming or having very very light periods um i never fully shed my lining so essentially my lining uteral lining is really really thick to the point where when we did our first ultrasound uh, everything was fine like he was showing me what was going on which is amazing to be like actually have my doctor be the one doing the ultrasound and like talking to me about it my very first ultrasound experience with the second OBGYN that we went to was terrifying I honestly had the first panic attack of my life in the middle of an ultrasound it was not great um, so this was a crazy different experience. Um, so we're going through it. He's showing me what my ovaries look like and there's a fibroid over here that they're not worried about. And But the lining, I think the words he used were, hmm, that's not great, which was not fun to hear. Um, so my lining was very thick. And the concern is too, um, you can't, it would be really hard for a baby to implant or an egg to implant um, on such thick lining. Um, but also, like you have to shed that. It's very important for your health. Um, so they wanted to see if there was anything to be aware of, aware of with the thick lining. So we scheduled 
um, a biopsy, which was pretty scary to be honest with you. I am kind of a chicken and the moment that he said the word biopsy, <sighs> I was not the most excited. Um, I was excited that we were dealing with stuff, but the idea that something else could be wrong was really scary to me. Um, so we did a lot of blood work. They basically just did a full analysis of everything they could on my body. Um, we had a biopsy scheduled and they wanted to do all of that before we would even meet again to like actually come up with next steps. Um, and all of my, um, m medical blood work came back fine. Um, hormones came back great. Sugar levels came back great, which is, I think what everyone is afraid of when you have a plus size woman that something like that is going to be the problem. But I, I'm as healthy as I can be, especially at this weight. Um, and then the biopsy came back. Uh, I think the words were healthy abnormality. I don't, that just sounds like future cancer to me, but whatever. Um, but they did say that we needed to shed the lining. So now our next steps are to shed the lining. So I am on Provera, um, which is a progesterone estrogen something that is going to cause me to have a period. It's going to um, trick my body into thinking that that's the next step. So I have taken that for, I believe it's 50 milligrams for 14 days is what they've decided. And I'm going to have the period to end all periods. It's gonna be like carry up in this bitch. Um, and then once that has happened on um, cycle day, so cycle day one is your first day of your period. Cycle day, I think six or seven, we'll be scheduling another biopsy and an HSG. The HSG is what they call the dye test or the ink test. They're gonna um, inject dye through my cervix and it's gonna show them on an x-ray through the fallopian tubes and the ovaries just to make sure that everything is working and to flush it out, as they've said. Um, and the biopsy will just be to make sure that whatever is left of the um, endometrial or uterine or something like that lining is healthy and okay. And then once all of that comes back good, we are going to start um, medication, which I expected to go on Clomid. I think I've talked to everyone about Clomid, but I actually was told that we will probably be starting Letrozole or um, Femara, 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 um, because their concern is I have a million little eggs in there uh, because I've not been releasing them. I haven't been ovulating. Um, and we don't want to overstimulate. And uh, so Femara or Femera or whatever is our option, is our next step. And so we're looking at that probably end of January, which I don't know, this blowing my mind. Now that it's like actually happening, I think Ryan and I have both had our own little like mini meltdowns, not because we don't want this or because we're not ready, but because we've been on this journey for two and a half years and um, I don't know, I just sort of kept getting <sighs> disappointed or let down. And, and this might still be a letdown. Like there's no, there's no promises. And maybe we'll have to go to IUI in the long run. But for now, it just is exciting and terrifying and comforting to know you're on a schedule of some sort. So that's where we're at. I had, uh, as I promised in my first video, I had my appointment just a few days ago where we um, discussed all of this, had another ultrasound, and um, they prescribed the um, pre Provera. All of these names sound familiar, and honestly, I need a spreadsheet. Um, so uh, today is day five for me taking it of 14. We shall see how my carry situation goes. Um, I think we're going to be on the last days of our little mini post-holiday trip to see Rye's family, which is gonna be interesting. And um, I don't know, I'll see you next time. Bye.